and welcome back to another podcast. It is me, your host, and your favorite person in the whole wide world, Tej. And uh, I have got two of my favorite people in the whole wide world with me today. Let's get them to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Shreya. I'm 16 and I'm from Hertfordshire. Hey, my name is Sneha. I'm also 16 and I'm also from Hertfordshire. Welcome back to the Cogcast. It has been a long, long time for, you know, those of you that have been watching this for a little while, you'll know who who these two are. Uh, But for those that have only just joined us and they're like, who are these two people that he just saying is their favorite, is his favorite, right? Or one of his favorites, right? Tell us a bit about yourselves. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, Okay. So, um, what do I say? Um, so there's my twin. We're twins. Um, I was originally sitting where she was, and then she kicked me out. So now I'm <laughs> in the room. Um, uh, I get, I've just done my GCSEs, and I am not looking forward to results day at all, one bit. Um, and yeah. No, I think it's something new. Okay, right. Um, same thing as what she said. Uh, added to the fact that I have a new favorite musician, which is really cool. Um, so I am a Demi Lovato fan, and I am so excited for their new album to come out on the 19th. So that's fun. She goes on about Demi Lovato so much, and all like my parents and me, which we've just had up to here with it. Like, Oh, I just can't wait for the album to come out and we can all get this over with. And honestly, oh, oh, you think that's it? It's not it. Shreya, this is going to go on forever. Don't even. You just have to find your own favourite band, Shreya. And, um, she has. She's got her own favourite. right now, so... Um, who's your favourite band then? Uh, Little Mix. Little Mix. <gasps> Who left from Little Mix? Jessie. Jessie Nelson. Jessie Nelson. She Nelson. left in like what? 2020. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I do. I do like both of them, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to get into the debate of which one's better. Um. <laughs> yeah, that could okay. last forever. Honestly, it could take ages. Um, talking about exams, what are you hoping for, and what what's the what's the idea in your head of what the next steps are? Because oh, see, even though you're twins, you, you've got slightly different, different path, Yeah, right? Yeah. So I intend to do um, medicine at uni. So I'm doing my A-levels, biology, chemistry, physics and maths. So I'm going to have a lot of fun. And I've had at least at least 10 people telling me that, like, that I've got a death wish. Me included. So, I'm so ooh. glad maths is over, honestly. Maths sucks. No offence to those people who like maths, but maths sucks, honestly. I can't believe you just said math sucks. That's, that's <laughs> wrong it on so many levels. Oh my god. What's your what's your plan then? So after the uh after results day, which is on the 25th, everything gets decided then. But the aim is to stay in the school that I'm currently at for sixth form. And then uh as I grow older, obviously, I wanna carry on by doing psychology, sociology and religious studies so I can become a primary school teacher when I grow older. Are you looking forward to like your separation or are you a bit I don't anxious? know about her, but I'm I think Snow is looking for it looking forward to it more much more than I am. Yeah. Because sure. I always like coddle her and tell her what tells her what to do. I get my freedom at last. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag sibling goals. Younger sibling goals, should I say? It's like five seconds in it. <laughs> it's two minutes and the best two minutes of my life. She was blessed. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> What's been happening this week in terms of the world, the UK? Scotland just had their results day to day. Oh, right? cool. And uh, what they found is that the results that people are getting are lower than the last two years. Oh, well, now, actually, now you've got a year that I've gone through that are doing exams that are actually doing exams rather than teacher assessments. Mm-hmm. Uh, the exam grade boundaries have gone down. However, they're higher than they were pre-COVID, but that's because the exam board have been lenient knowing that COVID is still around and people have not had full time in school. So if anything, the fact that we've got, we're getting higher grades than uh, like pre-COVID already feels like 
good to me. Oh my god. But um I guess I guess I'd understand that we'd be getting lower grades. I mean, we didn't have the same amount of disruption as like the pre- previous two years, but then we did still have some disruption. So I'm I'm okay with it. But the thing I'm worried about is that when we come to A levels, because this year our GCSEs have been kind of like oh yeah uh, had easier. so much like advanced information, which has really like saved my life. And we've been given like a path to on what to revise. So I'm really worried that when we get to year 13, of course, COVID's probably going to be like a not thought about thing at all so obviously there's going to be no help no whatever but because um during the, these like because these are our first public exams and also the fact that we've had that i've been relying so heavily on advanced information because i'm not going to get that in year 13 i'm going to have to rechange all of my study habits again and that's what i'm kind of stressed out about i'm kind of glad that they're easier than um they were before because um Obviously, I want to stay in the school and I want to get the A-levels I want. So I obviously need, like, because in our job, I think it was geography. Was it geography? Yeah. In our geography exam, some, I think it was a year nine, decided it would be a good idea to, during in the middle of our exam, to push the fire alarm. So we were oh. taken out of the main hall for, like, a good 45 minutes of our exam, which uh, completely made me lose my mind because I completely forgot what I was talk- thinking about. And obviously... It, made me lose my uh, train of thought so we were given like extra uh marks or i don't know something we were given some consideration yeah back uh so i'm glad that's the case but i haven't really thought about the fact that we haven't had as much time as other people because of covid because now that we're out of covid i've kind of forgotten about what it was like in covid so it's not really very different so I don't think it's affected me as much as it would if we were still in COVID. Are neither of you worried about the amount of competition you can have? Because I know, I, like, you've got in your heads where, where you want to go, which college or sick form you want to go to next, right? But if GCSE results are higher than pre-COVID, right, surely there's going to be a lot more competition for those spaces in that particular venue. Say if, like, a pass... A pass was like a four and then no and then like a good was a five and then like a, an excellent was a six and now it feels like it's just gone to a pass is like a five uh then a good is a six and like a great is a seven with the with the lowest being like a four rather than in my previous example the lowest being a three i guess like it's kind of felt like the boundaries have moved up. Like, it's, it's like different values, different numbers, but it's all the same. That's what it's felt like. But you don't feel like there's actually been a change in the difficulty? Not for me. I understand that it could be like that for others, but it's because... I guess it's because of the way our, schools, <coughs> our school is. I agree with Shreya, mainly also because I'm mainly trying to stay in the school. So for, for me, if I want to stay in the school and do the A-levels that I want to do, then of course I need to get like the recommended grades for each subject, but I need to get a total of 46 points to automatically stay in the school. So there's not much competition for me, which is probably why I haven't really thought of that as anything that I need to think about, but I see how it's for other people. So if they're changing schools or if they're trying to stay in the same school, it's different in each school. So I haven't really thought about it for them. A few weeks ago, I was talking to um, Annika and Fajir, right? Um, because there, there's this thing that's been happening since teacher assessments, which is where people are then moving on to the next level. So from GCSE, you're going on to A level, right? Um, and I think it was mainly to do with the university. So people that were going from A level to university, right, during COVID. And a lot of people, a lot more people than normal were being kicked off courses because their assessments were too high compared to their actual knowledge base, right? Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts? Like, how do you feel, like, knowing that you're going to be, you know, given in mind, we, we know grade boundaries have been altered to compensate for COVID, even, even for, you know, your year group, right? Or we assume, in Scotland it has, we assume it will be for England, right? 
how would you feel if you then went to college and the college like you started the course and the college was just like you know you're struggling with it you don't have the base knowledge you need um we're gonna have to say sorry but you know i think that's a kind that's of a scary thought because now with now we have very few options like even though now that our education system is like it's so good it's like now that we well, what was that um, we've got so much better. Like, even if we don't do one thing, there's still so many paths we can take. But I think that it's kind of stressful for someone who, whose, like, career kind of depended on that one, like, thing. Like, for example, if you wanted to be, like, a, like a brain surgeon, one, like, your easiest and most viable option would be to go to university. But if you're being kicked out of the course because of your lack of knowledge, out, which is out of your control, then I feel like that's obviously really going to be really stressful for you. And um, I guess that I feel that um, they, I think that people need to take this into account as well, that COVID, like, even though it's been one section, because one section of your education has been impacted, it's going to cause a domino effect throughout the rest of your, like, academic career. So I think people need to start taking that into account. Yeah, because as you... Um as say we've done our GCSEs and they've been so much easier for us in A level it's going to be a lot more a lot more a lot harder than it would be if we had done the full GCSE course and the exams because we've got a lot less knowledge and we have to know less for our exams due to the advanced information so as that did help us quite a lot and it's probably saved us in our exams it won't be, ben it might not be as beneficial in long term effect because we don't know as much detail as we need to know for those specific uh, qualifications that we need to take. So it's probably going to be a lot harder. How serious do you rate that convent, you know, that kind of thought process in terms of the, the bigger scheme of your life? For me, I'd, in the bigger scheme of my life, I'd give it five or six only because I feel like I probably I don't I know nothing about university so I'm currently under the impression that even though I've got little knowledge on something I feel like if I really tried hard I could like at least try to catch up on any of the knowledge I missed. I'd probably rate it like a four or five mainly because I haven't really thought about the long-term effects it's more of a focus on right now and what's going to happen like in the next few weeks because um i guess there's no point in thinking about that thinking that far ahead if you haven't really sorted out yourself now because it could be completely different uh later on so i don't know i haven't really thought about that the university i think you find the, the higher up you go the more independent learning you have to do and university, you're pretty much left to it yourself. So if you go to the lecturer and say, I need some help, they'll say, have you read this book? And if you say uh, no, then they'll say, go read that book. And if you say yes, they'll say, go read it again. Right? Yeah, I remember you were saying um, so about how you had a problem with this as well when you were in university as well. A lot of people have that, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I recently got onto TikTok. Um, nice. I didn't get onto TikTok. It's, uh, we, we have a recycling project and we've created a TikTok channel for the recycling project. Um, mm -hmm. and so as a result, obviously I have to, to understand how TikTok works. I have to watch some TikTok videos, right? That's, that's research. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people, especially on TikTok, that are sharing their experiences of university saying, you know, it doesn't, and it doesn't really matter which university, whether it's like Oxford, Cambridge, or whether it's Luton. Um, the experience seems to be the same where people are like, they're, they're frustrated at how much money they have to pay out and how little support they get. So I think if you're willing to put in that time to learn it yourself, that's what university is all about. Let's see what else has been happening. The Tory leadership election, the Conservative Party, Boris Johnson is gone. Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak are head to head, right? Which... <laughs> And I don't know how much you know about, you know, uh, politics or anything like that, but just on face value of what you do know, whether that's zero or whether that's a hundred, right? Who would you prefer to be in power? Um, so I'm, because I'm an, an Indian and Rishi Sunak is also Indian, my first, <laughs> I'm going to say Rishi Sunak because no. I know nothing else. I know zero about anything 
in this sector. However, I've heard my mom and dad talk about uh, Rishi as well. So um guess I'm gonna go with him. Many people vote that way. That's that's you know, that's that's demo- that's how democracies work, right? You vote you vote for what you believe. We're so knowledgeable. <laughs> um, exactly. I assume neither of you two are are members, actual, you know, paid members of the Tory party, right? So none of us would have a choice in terms of who's going to win that that race, right? Because it's down to the Tory members to, to be able to pick who they want, right? Um, but kind of, it's just interesting to know. I mean, the, the dividing line, have you been following any anything at all? No? Not okay. At all. Because there's obviously there's a big issue at the moment in life, which is going to impact on you guys when you lot become official adults right and you're adulting in the world and potentially even if you go on to have children or nieces nephews or do you know i mean whatever it is the next generation it may go on to affect them as well so the big question is uh, or the big issues are inflation and recession Mm -hmm. right so inflation is the cost of goods going up and recession is the economy slowing down and both are going to cause us big problems the big issue is we can only fight one of them we can't yeah. fight both because fighting one will reinforce the other. If we go into a recession, it will mean that inflation will go up, the cost of goods will go up, but because we'll be printing more money and things like that, called quantitative easing, the for us in this country, the price of everything will go down, but the value of the pound will reduce as well. So going abroad, buying things from abroad will become more expensive, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which means later on in life, you're going to have a super inflation issue, right? When interest rates go up. Or we can fight inflation, bring the cost of everything down now, but force, um, sorry, uh, fight inflation by raising taxes, okay? Slowing down the economy, right? To eventually keep the pound strong, yeah? Um, but that will mean that we have a recession and obviously there's going to be problems as a result of that with us being able to get goods uh and things into the country which one do you would you like based on just that really simple and you know probably uh ignorant explanation that i've given you right (laughs) which one would you prefer to live through they both sound terrible basically horrible either way yeah either way it's horrible (laughs) (laughs) but like i mean i guess i guess the, the main question is we can deal with so Liz Trust is saying let's drop inf- interest rates now, make life now more affordable, right? But it's something that we then have to deal with later and our children would have to deal with, right? Rishi Sunak is saying, no, let's raise taxes now. Let's deal with the issue with inflation right now so our children don't have to pay back, you know, all these debts that we're going to accrue if we drop in, uh, interest rates, right? So which would you prefer? Do you prefer the now or the later, like, to deal with it? I'm going to go with Rishi Sunak's idea because I believe that for like now my uneducated mind based on face value believes that I feel like that um, I think it's good that he's thinking about like the future generation because like politicians have a hard time doing so as seen by the whole the way that they're dealing with the climate crisis um, and in terms of the whole recession, although I, it will be really sad, and I guess that we we have to find some sort of way around it. I was like, when you first was describing the recession, the first thing I thought of was like the lack of toilet roll in like during <laughs> COVID. I don't even know why. So I was thinking of around it like that. Everyone and I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We can get alt- alternatives to toilet paper, so we can find alternatives. I have no idea either, um, but I'd probably go with deal with it now, mainly because in the future you're probably going to have to deal with all the climate stuff and like all oh, the younger generations being put with all this, um, the climate issue, and then on top of that, the money issue. So we might as well finish it now. However, that's also going to make us suffer. Which means that part of me is also th- saying, leave it to them so you can live a good life, you know? But then, I don't know, either way, it's quite bad. But uh, I'll probably do it for um, now and get it over with so that we can live like 
the rest of the generations don't have to suffer. They can move on. I'm going to yeah. play devil's advocate then. I'm, I'm going to say, you know what? I want an easy life now. <laughs> and my children can deal with my the, all the problems I've caused. That's fine. You okay. do you know what I mean? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about problems <laughs> being caused now, which future generations may need to deal with or are having mm-hmm. to deal with, climate change, the big <laughs> theme. Global warming. How important is challenging global warming to you right now? Honestly, after seeing this absurd weather, I feel like now it's just become even more important now because, like, it's crazy how... Because we went to India, like, two weeks was, ago, and it was hotter in England than it was, like, in India at one point. So that... And we're, we're, we're going to come back to this India trip because you said for three months you were sitting on that sofa, right? India is not... Listen, your sofa is not in India. Right. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Yeah, <laughs> carry on. Okay. Carry on. Hey. My eyes have finally been opened and now I think I believe it's time to do something about it. And that's why I'm putting it at like a good eight. I was going to say eight as well, because like, unlike you, Shreya, I cared about it a long, long time ago. But the thing is, as as we go on with this really rubbish and good weather, it's like... We've got to do something eventually, or else we're probably going to either melt or freeze, or we're going to have no wildlife in this world ever again, which is going to lead to starvation, which is going to lead to like more people dying or getting ill and then dying, which eventually means no more people on this earth. So uh, if you're going to really, really dark areas, it's really not, it's not a great thing to like keep this going and push it to each generation might as well finish it now which is probably why i said that with the money issue as well because like why leave it to a point that can't be fixed when you can just fix it now it's already happening isn't it i mean we've we've got host pipe bans now uh which is the first time since 76 that there's been a host pipe ban in the uk right uh the first time ever and i'm not even saying like before like since records began scientists believe it's the first time ever in the history of the country, like being a country, right? That the the source of the Thames River has dried up. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So it's now, apparently it's five miles. The source of the, the source of it is now five miles closer to the sea than it was last year. Oof, that's crazy. Oh. Right, or even a few months ago. Um, you, you guys are in London, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, so soon they're, they're talking about host pipe bands in London come in so it's not just the outskirts like uh, Surrey and the Isle of Wight um, or Isle of Man I can't remember which isle it is but um, I think it's the Isle of Wight because Isle of Wight South isn't it so uh, yeah it might be London what would you sacrifice because obviously every day we get closer to the end (laughs) the more things we have to do how far are you willing to go to like because we obviously rated it an eight right how far would you be willing to go to actually back that number eight up in terms of actions? Not saying that, you know, it, like not backing it up with actions is is wrong or nothing because we've still got to live lives, right? You're not going to stop drinking water for a year, are you? But like, what would you do? Would you, would you, would you be happy if you had to give up planes? Yeah, I'd be fine. It wouldn't with really it. affect, because we haven't been to like, say we went to India, we haven't been to India in like, I don't know, eight years? It hasn't really affected us. So because technolo- technology technology is advancing, it's like planes are like, we haven't been on a plane in so long that it doesn't really matter to us anymore if planes exist or not. The only thing that I like about a plane, to be honest, is the movies. That's about it. Yeah, and then again, movies on there. Yeah, and there are always alternatives, long alternatives, but alternatives nonetheless. And also, this might be the weirdest thing ever, but if we can have electric cars, we can have electric planes too. So, okay, would, would you would you give up your car? and wait until you could afford an electric car. Because electric cars are expensive, aren't they? So that's the reason most people don't have them. And there's not really a great infrastructure. 
But yeah, would you mm-hmm. give up a car today? And, wait and I'm, not for saying, I'm not saying you know there's there's a right or wrong answer to this. I'm you know um, there's people that live in tree houses, right, um, and grow their own food. Um, I'm not saying we all have to do that. <laughs> um and make their own clothes out of old clothes do you know what i mean like so there's people that are re- on the extreme end of sustainable living and zero waste and then there's people on the other end do you know what i mean that are very wasteful so we're just trying to find like if we're saying that climate change is actually an eight for us right now mm-hmm. what you know where does that line lie i think i would because Cars are already very expen- expensive to maintain. So if I were to give up my car, I'd be saving, I'd be saving some money, of course. And um, of course, there's public transport, which I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but it's cheaper to use, I guess. Also, it's, people say it's better for the environment. Then um, me being like a young person, I can definitely afford to, you know, cycle to like relatively close places again there are always alternatives i can use yeah probably because if there are other options then i guess cars are very useful they're very 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 useful but then if there's an alternative and it's like it's getting to a point where climate change is that high up the scale then um guess we all have to make some sort of sacrifice so um yeah okay deliveries Deliveries. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Amazon or Next or Boohoo, you know, all of them, ASOS. Would you give up those deliveries? I don't know if you get any in the first place, but I mean, yeah, in the first place we don't get any, but also <laughs> this has been drilled into my brain through geography GCSE. Yeah. But um even there's a whole problem with like high street um like actual shops like closing down because of how because of the lack of activity there and and it's causing um like domino effects to the rest of the community not just like Especially that like one. small businesses yeah it's, it's but small businesses too and it means that less people are coming in to visit the area which of course does not bring in money for that area which is not great obviously so i feel like it would be if anything better to go in person also there's just more satisfaction in going in person and i find it easier to you know control my spending in person you can also like control the like quality of what you buy more in person than online. Cool. Uh, next one, uh, meat. Controversial. Meat. Controversial. Oh my god. You know, um, um, but they say they say you know the meat industry takes up a lot of water resource, takes up a lot of land resource, um, and a lot of the food resource, the wheat and the grain, right? That could alternatively be used to feed humans directly, but instead we feed animals to fatten them up to feed us, right? Would you give up meat? I love my meat, but, um, well, my dad's vegetarian, so we have to make two different meals every day anyway, one for him and we eat it most of the time and something for us, but, um, oh my God. If I had to give up meat, then uh, I probably would, if I had to. But um, that's in the long, long run. Um, yeah. So I'm not saying yes or no or good or bad. Do you know what I mean? I'm just asking the questions. Shreya, would you <laughs> give up you? I'll come to a compromise with, um, I would limit it, but I really, really would not want to avoid it. What about only eating local? So no more bananas. Right, no more foods from abroad, only UK grown seasonal food. Ooh, that's Me kind of hard because a lot of a lot of our diet is like because we're Indian, so a lot of our diet is like Indian food, like Indian vegetables, Indian spices, all of that stuff. So the, if we were to shop locally, then of course that kind of means that like our main like diet would kind of be completely disrupted which would cause problems i'm one with my indian food i'm not one for british bland food no offense but um if i had things like if there were some things i could compromise with like if i didn't have a banana 
probably, or if I didn't have, I don't know, some other food, some vegetables, say. But the main things, like the main Indian things that I've grown up eating my entire life, it's probably going to be very, very challenging to leave behind and change my whole diet completely, as Shreya said. However, if I had like, I don't know, some spices or some things left or I don't know, anything that would make it taste similar to what I have that comes from India, then I'd be fine with it. But it's probably going to be something that I could not do. <laughs> Food is something that you can't mess with. Uh, recycling your own wastewater. Hmm. And a bio bio waste. I'd be down for that, except for the fact that it would be expensive. Well, I mean, if yeah, I mean, if 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 you could have a machine, you know, like we're we're talking about, you know, an eight on the seriousness scale, right? So we're saying we'd probably invest in something if we knew it would make a difference, right? Um. So, and I'm not saying that the the the, the problem of solving climate change is ours. I think I think there's governments that need to be doing more, right? But I'm just saying, as individuals. Um, would you would you invest if you could in a machine that recycled your bio waste to give you drinking water and give you fertilizer for your plants? I think I would definitely. If I could afford it, then yeah, sure, that's fine. Would you be happy with more nuclear power plants? I think I would, but then there's like a re- there's a big risk to that as well of of course with like nuclear meltdowns and of course it being so hard to control and also people are really wary around them so even if we did have them the likelihood of people using them is um not as high which of course which kind of it's anticlimactic but i would but I, w- I think I would use nuclear energy. I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I agree. However, I have no idea if it's going to last that long with all the concerns around it. But um, I mean, it's. I'd be happy to do it if, like, it had no. Um, if it had no negative effects with it. However, everything has a negative effect. So it's like. Is it something you're willing to risk? Is the question. They'll be built if we, you know, if the people are happy for them to be built, you know, and there's not too much opposition. Though I don't yeah. know if we have a choice because, like, wind and solar only work in certain conditions, don't they? If it's not windy, there's no wind power. If it's not sunny, or if it's nighttime, there's no solar panel. <laughs> <laughs> there's no solar electricity being generated, right? So, uh, nuclear is is quite sturdy. So is tidal uh, energy but I don't think we've invested that much in Tidal. Um, okay. Um, I think both, and, and someone will have to correct me if, if they know better, but I think both Rishi and Liz have said that they will stop the green levy in order to bring down the cost of living, right? Um, and reapply it later on in the future. So that will basically mean that the money that we take from taxes to build solar farms, wind energy, you know, off wind, uh, off, offshore wind farms and things like that. That will stop. Those projects will stop temporarily until later on in the future. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's something that we can temporarily pause and then come back to it, or should we not pause it? I I think that it's not the best idea to completely like shut it down for a period of time. I think it'd be fine to kind of like reduce the efforts but not shut it down completely because number one that's not i mean it depends for the time scale if it's maybe if it's only for like a couple of years max then i think it should be okay but if it was for like a long if it was over a long period of time then i don't think it does it do any good i agree with what you said i don't really have much of an opinion on this but um yeah i feel like if we pause it now then it's not really going to do much for the future other than like, I don't know, for like, it's probably going to be a short term thing if we do pause it. But then, I don't know. I don't know if there's any point, to be honest. I can't really explain, but yeah. 
realistically, climate change isn't going to stop because we've paused our green levy, is it? Mm. Um, that, that's going to carry on getting worse. So I guess even even a couple of years, we're then having to catch up two years on top of what we're already trying to catch up on, right? And if we're saying, yeah. you know, some scientists predict by 2030, if we haven't re- reversed some of the, you know, the, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air and all of that kind of stuff, then um that's too late after that so if you think 2030 is only eight years ago eight years away so taking two years off that that's 25 <laughs> percent um some people obviously predict later and no one actually knows um so yeah it's, it is a weird one. Oh, i've just thought of an, a, another thing for you to like would you give up new clothes what do you mean by new clothes like as in never get clothes ever again as it, yeah, basically, or, or or maybe only be allowed to buy, let's say, one new top, one new pair of bottoms, or something like that, once a year. Like, so basically, new clothes were like done. That's not going to be very sustainable. If you if you were that kind of person who was already quite minimalist and didn't own that many clothes already and having to be restricted to ver- like that like once a year kind of thing that's going to be very hard to like maintain so, in my case i feel like that's also i mean i feel like i could do i can make do with all the clothes i have that's not a problem but i feel like as i grow older and want to experiment with my fashion having the same clothes is not going to be easy let's say you get like taller or like your size changes over time as well so that's probably going to be like a challenge to uh only sustain what you have which like i'm kind of like i'm a small person okay so like i have dresses from like when i was six years old so i'm fine with that however as i grow older it's not it's probably going to change. So I don't know how say, sustainable that would be for like someone who, um, as Shreya said, has minimal clothing or who who's changes dramatically in size or in what they want to wear. Or say if they, I don't know, say if they wanted to uh, try a new fashion or they thought, oh, I'm not into this anymore, then... They don't really have an option if they stop it completely. So maybe like if it's like an on-off thing, then possibly like minimalizing, but not completely stopping it. You could always buy a sewing machine, couldn't you? Or if you want to be like ultra, ultra eco-friendly is needle and thread, right? Old school, right? Okay. And then you just get patches. I've, I've seen people, I've seen people that, you know, um, that basically they just find patches of clothes and they just patch them all together to make a jacket. So if you've outgrown your jacket, you you basically, you know, they, they've learned how to sew. They'll cut it up. They'll add patches to it to make it bigger and, and carry on. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. look like a, a piece of fashion. Like it wouldn't be a nice, like it's not, it's not, when I say nice, it wouldn't be like what is considered fashionable in today's day, right? But it's clothing, right? Yeah. So it is possible, but it's whether we'd be willing to to do that. Because I guess, you know, I mean, places like China and India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, those kind of countries, they're the ones that produce the clothes for us. They don't produce clothes for themselves. Yeah. So 70% of their carbon cost is because of us, right? <laughs> so as a nation, our carbon cost is quite low, but that's because we've outsourced everything right we don't manufacture anymore right yeah. yeah would be we would we be willing to give that up in order to prevent you know a lot of the climate change do you like that climate change <laughs> i think that um completely stopping the fashion industry here is already it's quite unsustainable because that's a lot of jobs like gone because like fashion is already such a, like a really big industry in the uk so um having a lot of our international like sources stopped what is going to definitely like ruin the economy in that sense and that's all and it's already like made worse 
due to the whole economy crisis that we're having now. So I feel like it would be really, it would be, although it'd be good for the environment, it's still quite unsustainable. Let me come back on that, right? Because I think there's a reason we went Brexit as a nation, right? Which was to take more control and to, of, of, of you know, what's happening within the country, right? Whether you voted for it or not, or you were old enough to vote for it or not, uh, we are in that situation, right? Um, and when it comes to the jobs thing, surely we would have more jobs in this country or because we're manufacturing in this country. So if we stopped, let's say, if we stopped buying from China and India, Bangladesh, you know, the Philippines, if we stopped buying clothes from there and we, we basically get the raw materials here and create the clothes ourselves within this country, we're creating more jobs in this country, aren't we? Yeah. Which would make true. it more sustainable. Yep. It would just be more expensive. You just have to pay more because we have a minimum wage in this country, right? Yeah. yeah. In other countries, yeah. Um, I didn't realize this, but things like the mo you know, like mobile phones, right? I don't know if you watched the documentary on it, but um, in China where they make them, the factories they get children uh, to come into the factories, so they don't go to school. They go into the factories, right? Illegally, right? They they're not meant to do that, but it happens, and the government don't clamp down on it. And they end up having to check that they have to do the screens. Basically, they pay the child like a pound a day, two pounds a day to check hundreds of screens to make sure they're not cracked. Oh, and they wow. The manufacturing facility. And then we pay what, you know, six, seven hundred pounds for our phone. Right. <laughs> um, if we made that in this country, the cost of the phone would go up. Right. Because yeah. now we'd have to pay. We won't be able to use you guys. <laughs> right? um, and, and, and you know, depending on how corrupt the governments are, but um, you know, we'd have adults on minimum wage doing that. So suddenly, it, the, the cost has gone from two pounds a day to a hundred pounds a day per person. Yeah. Right? Would you be yeah. Would you be happy to take on extra costs as a result of trying to become more sustainable? Because things would get more expensive if we have to grow locally. We don't grow our own food. We don't make our own clothes. We don't make our own electronics, right? Yeah, I I think it'd be a good idea because it would be good. It would be better in the long run, and I think that's one of the most important things to consider. I guess. So you'd give up. You'd give up the amount of food you could eat for the sustainability. I, I guess. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know what the thing is that I mean the longer the longer we wait and it's a shame that you know I mean this was recognized what in the 70s right that climate change was happening and we delayed it delayed it well we didn't delay we delayed doing anything about it until now right so we've we've lost what 50 years right yeah. about being able to do stuff about it and now we're at a point where the things we have to do are just so extreme to even mm -hmm. you know have an impact to make a dent um so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we don't see the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. What I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll carry on as I am. I'll leave it to my children, isn't it? They can deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your life as it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I think we've talked about loads of things today, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Covered a lot. Um, I think we'll finish it. <laughs> So yeah, um, thank you everyone for watching. I don't know what you lot thought. Uh, what would you be willing to give up for climate change or to stop climate change from happening or at least reduce it? Uh, let us know in the comments, like and subscribe and share with all your mates and we will catch you all next week. Take care, bye. Bye. Bye.